Welcome to Module 5, Lesson 13, where you're going to use benchmark fractions to compare fractions on a number line. So we're continuing where we left off. We are comparing, but it takes a step up in difficulty in this lesson. Start comparing numbers that are more than a whole. So what I mean by that is, if you guys recall, if I were to ask you to draw a fraction of 3 fourths, you would draw fourths and you would shade in three of them, three-fourths. And the numerator would be three, and the denominator would be four. If you were to shade one more in, you now have four-fourths, or one whole. This is very important today. Remember that when a numerator and a denominator are the same, then you have a whole, entire thing. The entire thing is filled up. Now, if I were to extend this, and add another fourth. How many fourths do I have? Well, I had a fourth here, a fourth here, a fourth here, here, and now I have a fifth of them. So now I have five fourths. This is now larger than a whole, right? The whole ended right here, but now it's a little bit more. It's actually one fourth more for a total of five-fourths. This is very important for today's work when you are comparing fractions. Now that you've got that reminder, let's go ahead and start looking at the number line. In your first problem, it asks you to place these three numbers on the number line, but they want it placed in order, and they want it placed accurately. Now there's something interesting. This number line starts with one, and it ends with two. What they're saying is every number here is somewhere between 1 and 2. Before, we were looking at numbers that were less than a whole, between 0 and 1. Now, they're more. But the denominator, denominators still tell the same message. They tell about halves, they tell about fifths, and they tell about tenths. In fact, when I want to know about halves, the first one, I usually say start with the lowest one, when I want to know about halves, I would take a look at this work here, and I would say, at a whole, how many halves is that? How many halves makes one? Now, in the previous slide, remember, you want the top number, the numerator, and the denominator, the bottom number, to be the same. So, in fact, two halves would be one. And in your work, you want three halves. So if this is two halves, if you hop right here, you would hit your three halves. And this is exactly where you'll need to place this. Three over two. Now we're not going to want this. Eraser's not working very well. There, I got it to go away. All right. So the three halves is written right here. And now what this is saying is that 3 halves is 1 and a half, which that's correct, right? If I have a half, a half, that's a whole. And another half, a third half, would be another half for 1 and a half. All right, now let's work on fifths. To turn this into fifths, you still would go ahead and draw on the number line fifths. So if you draw right here and then you cut in the middle of those, you've probably made five good hops. Remember, they have to be an estimate of where the fifths would be. Try to make them as accurate as you can. One, two, three, four, five hops to get across. Five hops. How would I put a nine fifths on there? Well, don't forget, you are starting at five fifths. You're starting at a whole. Five fifths would be one and I want to go to 9. So 5 fifths, 6 fifths, 7 fifths, 8 fifths, 9 fifths. So place your 9 fifths here. And now we'll move on to tenths. To turn fifths into tenths, you'll just want to make tick marks in between the marks that you've already made. And now you've doubled the amount, of, the, the amount that it takes to go across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Pause the video if you need to. Check to make sure that your 
number line shows 10 hops across. And I want to get to 14. Now, 14, <coughs> how can I get to 14 if I only have 10? Well, remember, the whole that you start with is really 10 tenths, a whole. And to get to 14, I would only have to hop four times. One, oop, wrong button. One, two, three, four. So four hops right there would be 14 tenths. These are your three numbers placed accurately on the number line. Now it wants you to use the number line to compare. But if you look, we've got mixed numbers here and here, and those don't really match the numbers I have above. Or does it? They actually do match really well. You see, this is one... <coughs> Let me fix this. This is one and a sixth. So really, a one would be seven, uh, six, six, and you have another six. So you have a total of seven, six, which is a little bit more than a whole. Six, six would be a whole. Seven is a little bit more. So I don't know exactly where this is at right now, but I know it's a little bit around here. It's just a little bit above one. But what about one and four twelfths? Well, for this problem, a whole would be 12 twelfths. And there's four more for a total of 16 twelfths. Now, how would I find 16 twelfths on here? Now, if 12 twelfths was a whole, that'd be at one. And four twelfths more would get me a little bit more of the distance away from one. Not much, but farther enough, far enough to be away from the seven six. Oh, sorry, I have that backwards. Ah. Let's erase this. And of course, it won't erase, so I will tell you to just put this sign going the other way. I am sorry about that. I'm still learning this program, and I don't know why the eraser won't work. All right, that one was really difficult. I don't think they intended to put sixths and twelfths when the problem was not about six and twelfths. It was about fifths and halves and tenths. So let's look at the next one. One and a half. You know right where that's at. One and a half was in the middle here. One and a half. Now how does that compare to one whole and four fifths? Well, one whole, if I were measuring it in fifths, would be five fifths. And don't forget there's four fifths also. See, so this number actually lines up. Five-fifths and four-fifths is nine-fifths. So on the number line, one and a half's here, one and four-fifths is here, so one and four-fifths is larger. It's farther away from the zero. All right? Now, at the bottom, there my eraser worked. You have to do this again, but with fifths, fifteenths, and ninths. And your drawing's already placed into fourths. I don't know if you saw that. A one, a fourth, a half, a fourth again, and two. So this one, I would say you're going to kind of want to ignore the fourths. You're going to want to make fifths and fifteenths. Fifths and fifteenths would be a good option to do. So I'm going to make fifths again like I did above. Those are my fifths. Six fifths would be one more than five fifths. So this would be five fifths. Six fifths would have to go here. And then to turn fifths into fifteenths, you would want three in every section. So this would turn to three, six, nine, twelve, and fifteen. And I want eighteen fifteenths. Fifteen fifteenths would be here at the hole, right? Fifteen fifteenths. So 16, 17, 18 fifteenths. These are at the exact same spot. And if you did notice, triple the 6 to 18, triple the 5 to 15, they are exactly the same. Now how would I place the 9 twelfths? Sorry about that, I called it 9 twelfths. How would I place the 12 ninths? 
I actually think it would be so confusing to try to fit ninths on here that I would erase all of my tick marks and now make ninths or thirds because ninths could be divided by three and turned into an equivalent fraction of thirds. So there as you see, I erased it. I left my two that I needed. And now I'm going to go ahead and say 12 ninths. This could be divided by threes. I know I'm writing this backwards, so I just didn't want to run any other thing. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. So this number is really only 4 thirds the way across. So if I were to make this turn into thirds, and 3 thirds would be a whole, then 4 thirds would be one hop across. So 4 thirds, or AKA 12 ninths, would be right about here. So you, these two tie, and 12 ninths would be here. Now that, boys and girls, was really, really difficult work. Don't worry, we're gonna, you have to compare fractions, and you have to give an explanation using benchmark. My students, I told you in class probably, the rule for this page, I want you to explain five of them. The others, just compare however you want. Draw, use cross multiplication, um, use number lines. But for five of them, you need to tell me how they compare to benchmarks. I think this is actually easy because if some of these fractions are more than a whole, they could probably be larger than the other fractions. So like C, six fourths, four fourths is a whole, right? If it was four fourths, it'd be a whole. If this one was eight eighths, it'd be a whole. But six fourths is more, and eight eighths is seven eighths is less. So this one's definitely larger. And I could just say something simple as um, I forgot the number. Was it six fourths? Six fourths is more than a whole, or more than one, right? And I'm done. And I would give the same exact explanation for this one. 3 over 2 is more than a whole. And on this one, both of these numbers are more than a whole. But 11 6 is way more than 6 6. So that's farther away. It has more pieces. It's much larger. And then you would have to write that it's um, 11 6 is almost a 2 actually. If it was 12 6 it would be 2. You could say that. 12 6 would be 2 so 11 6 is really close to 2 holes. Alright? Other ones you might want to compare uh, with halves. 1 4 is less than a half. 6 twelfths. If it was 6 twelfths it would be a half. 8 twelfths is more so this is larger than a half and you could say that 8 twelfths is larger than a half. Alright. This was a hard lesson, um, and I took a lot of time. So I'm going to stop the video now. We will keep working on this stuff together uh, for a while before it becomes where it's an assessment, and I expect everyone to be able to do it on their own. So don't worry about that. Work hard on it, and see me if you have any other questions. Thanks.